name is Clive Ecker, the first name Charles. I'm here on this magnificent campus of Iowa State University conducting a week-long seminar in couture design and construction for some 55 participants. I'm from New York City and we're having a great exchange. We're covering many facets in the whole fashion and construction world and from time to time I explain to the students what happens backstage behind the scenes, so to speak, and I tell them that public relations is also an important involvement if they want to bring in some business because I explain that the fashion world is economics as well as aesthetics. So I'm involved right now in a special event in New York City with the New York Racing Association. Uh, this is the association that owns in New York State the fashionable tracks, Belmont, Aqueduct, and notably Saratoga. And as I'm sure some of you out there, many of you are aware, the world of glamour is coming back, whether it be beautiful clothes or thoroughbred horse racing. And the New York Association sees these two as very compatible. And with that thought, they've gone to a New York firm that I'm associated with, American Silk Mills, and have asked that fine company to give pure silk fabrics to a number of designers to do some rather extravagant garments that might be worn at, say, the racing track or at a racing ball. As you probably know, the horse racing world is involved with what is called racing silks, which means that each stable has selected its particular color. Now, the designers involved are Bill Blass, Jeffrey Bean, Mary McFadden, Casper, Giorgio de Sant'Angelo, I forget a few, and myself. In my instance, I have been assigned the colors of Mrs. Winston Guest of Long Island, and her colors are red and old rose. With that thought, I'd like to take you behind the scenes and show you what we're doing in the way of this garment. I have to ask you to use your imagination because in an exploratory way, we did the first dress, the first version rather, in navy blue. It is silk taffeta and I, I'm asking beautiful Tony to come on and to show it. Now this dress will be done in the red silk taffeta which I'm showing to you right here in the very dress that you see on Tony and my staff in New York right now is working on that particular garment. We are very biased in the back. We make all of these little buttons work. And I'm going to show you that while, oh, incidentally, the old rose will be this very uh, carefully hand beaded belt that we're showing on Tony. And the idea is that you could wear this dress belted or you might wear it on its own in a very loose way. And then Tony is going off for the moment and show you how we might bring it back in another way. I'll let you go off. Incidentally, as I said, this has all been hand beaded. It takes my workroom a long time to do this kind of work. And it is why the garments that I'm showing to the participants here in the textile and clothing department of Iowa State University, I'm explaining why these garments must cost from $600 to $2,000. We've backed this with pure silk gazar. Now to get back to the New York Racing Association event. On September the 12th, Blass, Bean, Mary McFadden, myself having done these garments, we are to show them on September 12th and we as the designers are to be dressed as jockeys and we are to bring on leading a thoroughbred horse atop which will be one of New York's beautiful people, women. How we're going to get her off of this horse, I don't quite know, but Tony, would you make an entrance again to show how you might wear this coat or wear this dress as a lightweight coat. We're unlined and it means you must do some careful construction inside as I'm explaining to the participants in this seminar at Iowa State University. Can we unbutton you? Incidentally, I think that little cuff look is so important for you ladies who wear clothes, so won't you keep that very snug to your wrist? Now, underneath this coat is what we will be showing also, and this is the red. These are the pants that will be shown in New York City on September 12th. We have a little biased bandeau here. Not much fabric in the back, I realize. 
Could I move now into what I consider the really important part? Fit, construction. You cannot have beautiful clothes, beautiful design without really bearing down on careful construction. It seems to me that trousers, whether they be for a man or woman, are often a problem in fit. These are all on the bias, and yes, I think this is a rather extreme trouser, but remember, we're doing it for this rather extreme event. We are entirely biased. I've left it slashed here so that you might have a chance for some easy dancing because I think it is that kind of a trouser or pant. I'm asking for Tony's back, and remember, we have some bastings here. That is the idea. Now, I fit this trouser on one body in New York, and here we come to Tony's beautiful one, but it needs some adjustment. And as I see it, this is usually what happens with your pants or your skirts. Too much fabric down here. I find it a very, very simple kind of an alteration for you to pick what I call pick up that fabric, get rid of it. The band is sitting beautifully on Tony. It usually does on you. Leave it there, forget it. But take pins, and pin against that band. I start at the center back, and I pin until that fabric, the excess of it, begins to disappear. And I continue to pin until I get to the side seam where I usually lose it, or a little bit beyond it. But just keep letting that anatomy tell you what it wants. Some of the participants keep asking me here, what do I do? And I say, well, let that anatomy tell you. So I'm letting this anatomy tell me where this excess is to lose itself. So won't you consider, please, looking at the derriere and getting rid of that excess? The other place where I feel we have problems in fitting with trousers, man or woman, is this area inside, that it look clean. You see how clean this bias is falling on Tony. That's what you want to achieve. And I'll tell you where you can work toward that, whether as a girl you are making a trouser for yourself or whether you might be making it for the man in your life. We have in here a dart. I have them on my trousers. And they are great at helping you clean up the garbage, so to speak. That dart, it's in the back part of the trouser. It is. I'd say about an inch away from the inseam. It is about three and a half inches long. No one is going to know that that dart is there, and I think it is going to help you achieve a beautiful fit when you are making a pant or a trouser. What I'd like to do now is to walk into the workroom area and show you my way of cutting. I think it might be a thought for you. Tony, we thank you, all in bias. <laughs>